Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Judge Kavanaugh, you and your family have been treated incredibly poorly by Senate Democrats and by the media. And let me say also, I think Dr. Ford and her family have been treated incredibly poorly by Senate Democrats and the media. You have both seen your good names dragged through the mud. And this has been, sadly, one of the most shameful chapters in the history of the United States Senate. Let me say to you and your family, thank you for a lifetime of public service. I will say, watching your mother's pained face has been heart-wrenching as she's seen her son's character dragged through the mud after not only your lifetime of public service, but her lifetime of public service as well. And I know as a father, there's been nothing more painful to you than talking to your daughters and explaining these attacks is it worked out? that the media is airing. I also believe, though, that the American people are a fair-minded people, that the American people can set aside the partisan warfare of Washington and look to substance and facts. And that is the charge of this committee. Now, there have been three different sets of allegations that have dominated the media. I think it's important to note that two of those sets of allegations had so little corroboration that even the New York Times, which is no conservative outlet, refused to report on them because they could find no basis for them. And it was striking in this entire hearing that not a single Democrat in this committee asked about two sets of those allegations. Ms. Ramirez's allegations and the allegations of the client of Mr. Abinetti. Not a single Democrat. I don't know if they were just too embarrassed. Mr. Abinetti's allegations were so scandalous that the ranking member omitted his client's most scandalous accusations of you as a criminal mastermind, essentially, omitted those scandalous accusations from her statement. This hearing has focused, rightly so, on the allegations Dr. Ford presented. And let me say, I think the committee did the right thing in giving Dr. Ford a full and fair opportunity to tell her story. That's what we needed to do when these allegations became public. And the committee treated her with respect, as we should. I do not believe Senate Democrats have treated you with respect. What do we know? We know that her testimony and your testimony are in conflict. A fair-minded assessor of facts would then look to what else do we know when you have conflicting testimony? Well, we know that Dr. Ford identified three fact witnesses who she said observed what occurred. All three of those fact witnesses have stated on the record under penalty of perjury that they do not recall what she is alleging happening. They have not only not, not corroborated her charges, they have explicitly refuted her charges. That's significant to a fair-minded fact finder. In addition, you've walked through before this committee your calendars from the time. Now, I will say you were a much more organized teenager than I was, and than many of us were, but it was a compelling recitation of night by night by night where you were in the summer of 1982. That is yet another contemporaneous piece of fact to assess what happened. And we also know that the Democrats on this committee engaged in a profoundly unfair process. The ranking member had these allegations on July 30th. And for 60 days, that was 60 days ago, the ranking member did not refer it to the FBI for an investigation. The ranking member did not refer it to the full committee for an investigation. The ranking member, this committee could have investigated those claims in a confidential way that respected Dr. Ford's privacy. And some of the most significant testimony we heard this morning is Dr. Ford told this committee that the only people to whom she gave her letter were her attorneys, the ranking member, and her member of Congress. And she stated that she and her attorneys did not release the letter, which means the only people that could have released that, that letter were either the ranking member and her staff or the Democratic member of Congress, because Dr. Ford told this committee those are the only people who had it. That is not a fair process. 
and we should look to the facts, not anonymous innuendo and slander. M Mr. Chairman, could I ask the chairman a question, which is, does the committee have a process if there is an allegation against any nominee oh. to assess that allegation in a confidential forum rather than in the public, since Dr. Ford requested that it be kept confidential. Is there a process for the committee yeah. for considering confidential yes, allegations? And, uh, and the answer is yes, and I sent Senator Tillis pointed out the document that I put out to show of all the things that we've done along the lines of your question. And Mr. Chairman, what would you have done if on July 30th, the ranking member had, had raised this allegation with you? As the chairman of this committee, how would you, you have You would have done that? like we have done with every uh, background or let's say FBI report that comes from the White House with the nominee, and then uh, subsequent to that, because maybe the FBI got done with it three months ago, we go through the FBI or information comes to us, then we have our investigators in a bipartisan way, both Republicans and Democrats, uh, follow up on those, whatever those questions are or those problems that have to be worked out. So bipartisan investigators could have investigated this two months ago and it could have been heard in a confidential setting without Dr. Ford's name or Judge Kavanaugh's name being dragged through the body. Is that correct? And except for one or two conversations that we had with the judge through our investigators, Democrats didn't participate except in those two, but in those two or one or two, they didn't ask any questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No.